What's up everybody, it's me Jordan, and I'm back with another drawing video. In this video, I'm going to be doing the style challenge, which I don't think I really need to explain. It's pretty obvious. You draw a character, and then you draw them in different art styles. I know, right? Just, who would have thought that? Pretty much every artist on YouTube has already done this, and like usual, I am late to the bandwagon, but better late than never, right? There's a lot of work to do on this drawing, so I'm gonna get right into it, but stick around because I will also be narrating a creepy pasta story after I talk a bit about the drawing process, so stay tuned for that, and let's do it! The four styles I decided to go with were Gravity Falls, Adventure Time, a Tim Burton style, and The Simpsons. It was really interesting drawing these because I'm used to more doing an anime style and you'll notice that with my version of Jeff, a lot more anime than these kind of cartoony ones. So it was a bit of a challenge for me just in the way I had to do it. Also because I'm doing this traditionally, it's a little bit harder to get it looking like it is in the shows. A lot of people do these speed paints digitally and obviously that kind of works a bit easier because that's how they do it for the shows. So I have put a bit of my own style into these pieces as well, even though I'm meant to be doing it all in the show's style, but I couldn't resist. I am just kind of doing this challenge for fun. It's not like a super serious thing. So I just want to have a bit of fun with it as well, but still kind of stay slightly true to the style of each respective piece. Also, it's worth mentioning, I just want to bring it up now because when I go into the story, I will be coloring my version of Jeff. I didn't really realize it at the time, especially at the inking stage, but his nose was a little bit off. And as I continue on coloring it, you'll see later, the bridge of the nose looks a little bit wonky, like he's been punched in the face and he's broken his nose or something. I didn't really realize I could fix it quite easily, but as I was commentating this video right now, I literally realized I could. So I went in with a black pencil, straightened his nose a bit, on the left side, just adding more shading there. I didn't record it, so it's not in the video, but I might upload the updated photo onto my Instagram, so if you wanna see it fixed, maybe have a look at that. I'm kind of annoyed and happy at the same time because I can't believe I didn't realize I could fix it so easily before, and I'm kind of annoyed because now I've already photographed these pictures, I had made the thumbnail for this video already, and now I realize it looks better now. So yay, I fixed it. Not yay because I have to update everything. So that's annoying. But for you guys watching, it looks better now, okay? So all you people who say his nose looks f***ed up, it doesn't look f***ed up anymore. He got some serious plastic surgery going on and I think it looks a lot better. So check out my Instagram if you want to see how it looks now. <laughs> but that's annoying, but good at the same time. I don't know how to feel. I'm conflicted with my feelings. I don't understand how to express myself now. <laughs> I don't know how to feel anymore. Too many emotions. Okay, I think that's about time to wrap this up. I'm gonna jump into a story. Originally, it was gonna be a Jeff the Killer kind of spin-off story, and I narrated the whole story, but... It was like half an hour long, so it was way too long for this video. I will be making a new video for that piece and doing a drawing as well for that. So look out for that, that will be coming. But for this video, I've just got a kind of random creepypasta. It's nice and short and I thought it was pretty cool. So hopefully you guys enjoy that. So chuck your headphones on, turn off the lights and let's get on with the story. I've been laying down on this couch, watching TV for what seems like hours. I can hear my dog barking downstairs, and I glance up at the wall clock. It's nine already, and I still haven't had dinner. 
My parents are out for the night, so I'm home alone with the maid. My stomach grumbles impatiently, and I decide it's about time to have some dinner. I flick off the TV and slowly get up on my feet, when suddenly, all the lights go out. I flick the light switch several times. Nothing. It must be a power surge. They're pretty common in this area. I'll have to go downstairs to the kitchen and turn the power back on from the power box. In the darkness, I can't find my slippers, so I just decide to go without them. Using the walls to guide me, I reach out my hand, searching for the banisters. As I make my way downstairs, I notice how quiet the house is. I don't hear my maid's radio, or even my dog barking. Nothing. All I can hear is the sound of my feet against the stairs. The house is absent of any light or sound. My house suddenly feels unfamiliar, and I feel lost. Unable to see or hear anything. My fingers tighten their grasp around the banister to prevent myself from feeling completely disorientated. The silence is really beginning to get to me. May! May! I call out to my maid just wanting something to break the silence. No response. The silence is unnerving, and the creepy pastors I've been reading have made me paranoid. My head darts from left to right, searching for any signs of a monster or a serial killer. I use the wall to guide me, and slowly make my way to the kitchen. My chest tightens as I begin to pick up on the smell of raw meat. The smell gets stronger with every step. Fear swells in my chest with every breath that I take, and my heart begins to pound harder and harder. It's natural for a kitchen to smell like meat, I try to reason out to myself, letting out a nervous chuckle. I grope around until I find the smooth metal surface of the power box in the kitchen wall. I open the hatch and place my fingers on the master switch. I hesitate. I can feel my heart hammering in my chest. Do I really want to turn the lights back on? Horrific possibilities of what I could see race through my mind. I take a deep breath. And flick the switch. The lights blaze on and I'm blinded for half a second. My eyes quickly adjust to the brightness, and I stop in horror at the sight that beholds me. My heart feels like a laden weight in my chest. My dog's corpse lay in a corner of the kitchen. His body is mangled and looks as though he's been savaged by a pack of wolves. He lays in a pool of his own blood, eyes wide open, and his mouth agape. His innards are emptied out into the puddle of blood, littered with his shiny black fur. The smell is sickening. A set of bloody footprints, if you could even call them that, led straight from his body to the maid's room. The footprints were vaguely human, but were large, far too large to belong to one. 
Their shapes were contorted, twisted almost beyond recognition. The door to May's room is closed. There's a set of bloody claw marks on the door, perfectly complementing the footprints by her door. The scene is all too much, and the little food I had left in me quickly finds its way out of me. My vomit and the blood quickly pull together on the shiny white surface of the kitchen floor. I run out of the kitchen, into the living room and up the stairs. The house is as quiet as when I came down, but I can hear the pounding of my heart to accompany the sound of my footsteps. Tears of fear swell in my eyes, clouding my vision. I run into my room, close the door, and dive under my blanket. My breathing is fast and heavy, beads of sweat stream down my face. I stare at the door. My mind is so overcome with fear that all I can do is stay put and await my fate. I'm expecting the door to be brought down any moment. Seconds pass. Nothing. Minutes pass. And still nothing. After a while, it begins to seem odd that nothing has happened. But I decide that it would be best to just stay put. It's not long before I start to feel sleepy. My eyelids start to droop. With every passing minute, I get sleepier and sleepier. I try to fight back, knowing that staying awake is a matter of life or death. But my efforts are in vain. I doze off. I am jerked awake by the sound of my parents' car pulling into the garage. It's still dark so it must still be very early in the morning. My heart suddenly lightens, and I leap out from my bed. It was all just a dream. I'd run downstairs, hug my parents, and we could all have a good laugh at the ridiculously frightful nightmare I had. I flick on the lights, and my heart freezes. From the door, there's a set of bloody footprints that circle my bed and disappear under it. Hello? 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 Um, hi. I'm the old security guard at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. Hopefully you're getting this message. I need to explain to you what to do. Now, I'm actually finishing my last week here. That's why you're getting my old job. 